Hey gang and welcome to your very first React Query tutorial. Now, just really quickly before we start the tutorial, for those of you who want to support the channel and join the gang officially, you can do it by clicking that join button right here. It's just 99 cents or pence per month and you get these cool little ninja loyalty badges next to your name in the comments down below when you leave a comment. You can also join by clicking the button right beneath the video if you're watching one now, which I'm guessing you are, it does exactly the same thing. All right, so now that's out of the way, let's get on with the tutorial. All right then, so I thought I'd do a little mini series all about a React library called React Query because it's really nice and it's a pretty easy library to pick up and run with. Basically, this package gives us an out of the box state management for any kind of asynchronous data that we might use, whether that's from a REST API or using GraphQL or anything else which involves fetching asynchronous data. Now, it does this by giving us a custom hook in React called Use Query, and that manages a lot of stuff under the hood for us, like caching the data after the initial fetch, and that's going to speed up our site and give us a better user experience or refetching data in the background so our site is always in sync with data. And it also gives us access to information about the requests that we make, like its status, any errors, etc. So all in all, it allows us a really elegant way to manage asynchronous data and state in React. So in this series, we're going to create a simple website which is going to interact with the Star Wars API called Swappy, and this link is going to be down below in the description. And under the hood, this application is going to use React Query to manage all of our asynchronous data and component state for that data. So I'm going to show you how React Query works, how it fetches and caches the data, but I'm also going to show you how to use it to manage something like pagination as well to get different pages of data. Now, it goes without saying that before you start this course, you should probably already have a decent understanding of React and know how to create a simple React application. Now, also, you should probably know how to use React hooks as well, because we will be using the hooks from the React Query library. So if you know none of this, then definitely check out these two playlists on my channel, first of all, Complete React and also React Context and Hooks. The links to both of these are going to be down below. And also, as usual, I've created course files for every single lesson in this tutorial series. They're on this GitHub repo right here, React Query Tutorial. The link to this is going to be down below as well. But every lesson has its own branch. So if you want to see the code for lesson three, for example, go to the branch drop down, then go to lesson three, and you're going to see all of the files and folders right here. So then let's now start with a little bit of setup. So let's create a React project first. And to do this, I'm going to say npx and then create React app. And then I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call it Star Wars, all one word. So press enter to create that project. OK, so once that's done, I'm going to CD into that directory. So CD Star Wars. And then I'm going to install the React Query package. So to do that, I'm going to say npm i for install, double dash save to save this to my dependencies, and then react hyphen query. So this is the package name. So let's just install it now so we can use it later on. Then once I've done that, I'm going to open it up in Visual Studio Code, which I already have installed. So I'll say code and then dot for the current directory. This is going to open up Visual Studio Code over here. So now we have this blank project. So then next, I just want to create a few basic components for this project so we can concentrate on React Query in the future lessons. So let me just zoom in a little bit first of all, and then let's open up Source and take a look at some of the stuff that React has given us out of the box. The first thing I'm going to do is delete this thing right here, app.css, because we don't need that. I don't need the test file either, and I don't need the logo, and also the service worker and the setup tests I don't need as well. Now, inside index.js, I'm going to get rid of this line because we don't need it. We also don't need this thing up here. And I think that is pretty much it for this file. Now, if I go over to app.js, we can strip a lot of this out. So all of the code that comes here, all of the default boilerplate code, we can get rid of. And we'll just keep this div with the class of app. We also don't need this SVG. And we don't need app.css because all of our CSS is just going to go inside this file right here. OK, so now let me also create a few of our own components that we're going to need. So we're going to need 
a navbar component which is going to show those two buttons at the top to show either the people from Star Wars or the planets and we also need a component to show the planets and a component to show the people. So let's create those three components. First of all I'm going to place this in a file or folder rather called components and inside there new file and we'll call this one navbar.js and then also we'll create another file called people.js to show the people and also a component called planets.js to show the planets. So then let's go back to app.js and start to flesh this out. So inside here I want a title first of all so let's do an h1 and that is just going to say Star Wars info and then underneath that I'm going to do a div with a class name equal to content. So this is where all of the main content is going to be and ultimately what we're going to do is show either the people component here to list the people or the planets component here conditionally. Okay now above that right here we need the navbar. So let's first of all save this and then go to the navbar and try and flesh this out. So I'm going to say import react from react and then down here I want to create a functional component so stateless functional component tab and by the way to do that you need a package which is called let me just scroll and find this simple react snippets so this gives you a little shortcuts to create boilerplate code in react and that's what I just did for this component right here so first of all we're going to call this navbar and then we need to create the template for this so inside here let's first of all return a nav element and inside that all I'm going to do is two buttons so a button first of all for the planets and then also a button for the people so ultimately what I want to do is when we click on this I want to update a bit of state inside this component which is then going to say okay well since we have that as the value I'm going to show the planets component and if we click on people then it shows the people component right so let's nest the navbar right here so navbar is going to go here and we need to import that at the top so import and it's navbar from dot forward slash components and then forward slash navbar okay so let me just save this for now and what I want to do is open up my terminal and I want to run this so I'm going to say npm start so that we can spin up the local development server and then we should be able to preview it okay we get an error so let me go over here and it's where I export so navbar save that and now we can preview this on localhost so let me open this up and it's come way over here so this is what it looks like so far pretty shoddy but we're going to flesh this out and add some CSS to it shortly as well so the next thing I want to do is hook up this functionality so that if we click this we show the planets component right here and if we click this we show the people component right here so to keep track of what button a user's clicking we're going to create a bit of state so let me say down here const and in square brackets page and set page is equal to use state so this is the use state hook and again if you don't know what hooks are definitely check out my react hooks tutorial first of all so we're going to give this an initial value so the first page we're going to show by default will be the planets page or the planets component rather so now down here we want to evaluate this thing now if that's equal to planets then we're going to show the planets component if it's equal to people we're going to show the people component so how do we do that well we're going to use a ternary operator to do that so inside curly braces we can say we want to evaluate page is that going to be equal to planets now if it is then we're going to show the planets component so planets like so and if it's not colon we want to show the people component right so this is how a ternary operator works we evaluate something question mark if it's true we return this if it's false we return this okay so then now we need to flesh out these two components as well first of all let's import those so up here I'm going to say import and we want the planets component from dot forward slash components and then forward slash planets 
and then we also want to import the people component from dot forward slash components forward slash people all right then cool so now let's get rid of these two and we want to flesh out the planet file first of all in fact before we do this there's one more thing we need to do and that is to hook up the functionality of the nav bar so when we click this we show planets if we click this we show the people component so to do that we need to go to app.js and pass in this function to the navbar component so let me say here we want a prop called set page and set that equal to the set page function and then inside the navbar we'll accept that prop by using destructuring so set page then we want to call this and update the value when we click on one of these buttons so let's say on click for this one first of all and that is going to be an anonymous function which wraps the set page call and then we need to set this to planets the value so that is going to update the value of this to planets which it is already and also we want to do the same thing for the button below so let's paste that in but this time we want to change this to people okay cool so if we try to preview this at the minute it's not going to work woohoo because we don't actually have these components planets and people doing anything they're empty at the minute so let's now flesh out those things so let's go to planets first of all and i'm just going to paste this in so you don't have to watch me write it it's a dead simple component all it's doing is returning a div with an h2 inside of it so we're exporting this and we can save that let's do exactly the same for the people component now oops people and again i'm just going to copy this from my repo and paste it in here so you don't have to watch me type this again we have a very simple component this time called people and a div and an h2 and we're exporting it right here so now we're going to show either this component or the planets component on the home page over here right here okay so if we try this now and if we preview over here then this should work if we click on people then it goes to people if we click on planet it goes back to planets awesome so there's one more thing i want to do in this setup tutorial and that's just to style this a little bit so it doesn't look so shoddy so let me just zoom that back over there and open up our index.css file i'm going to get rid of all that junk that comes along for the ride and i'm going to paste in my own styles again they're found on my github repo uh, this isn't a css course so i'm not going to go through this thoroughly but just really quickly for the body we strip away the margin sans serif font a background of 222 which is a really dark gray white font or gray font rather uh, text align everything to the center the app which is this main div surrounding everything right here we say that's got a width of 960 pixels margin zero top and bottom auto left and right so we have a central column of 960 pixels the h1 a yellow color increase the font size to 4m let space in two pixels and then the buttons which remember we have in the nav bit of a margin around those the background is transparent bit of a border of a gray color border radius 20 pixels so it's soft around the corners some padding a color of the text and the font size and also the cursor is a pointer which is that little hand uh, the button when we hover over it we change the text color to white instead of gray and also the border color and then the content div which is the main content right here we're saying text align left because remember for the app we set it or rather up here for the body we said text align center so fingers crossed this is going to look a bit better and if we take a look now this looks all right so we can switch between people and planets like so so there we go we've got the basic application sorted now and in the next video we can start to use react query